Hey guys, Corporal G here from COC in Kentucky. Today I want to show you the prep work that you need to do to um, paint your pieces. The reason I want to do this video separately is because this prep work is for all the pieces you're going to paint. So we're going to get right into it. So my first painting video is going to be Germany. So here's a little, some of my few painted pieces. And you can see there are different schemes. But all these schemes, all the prep work was the same. So that's, this is the reason I want to show you guys. So I got a little SS printing Panzer Grenadier, some German naval units, some airborne or Fossmeiger, some mountain troops, militia, and German. The one on the far left is the paint scheme I'm going to show you guys in the next video. But again, the same prep work's the same for everything that I do. Take this off. Now some of you guys might have some pieces already painted as in one color. That's how I first started off. I had all my Japanese orange, that pumpkin orange color, my Americans all drab, my Germans black. So what I did, I uh, was watching some videos, you know, how to play axes and allies, better rules, and um, well, I stumbled upon Axis Isles, the Garrison, Sour Blood, Cobra Kai, I believe Hunter Jones painted some pieces. And apologize for people who I left out. But I started seeing that. I was like, well, I can do that. I have these, you know, cool solid colors. And for gameplay purposes, I'll just, I'll just start with their skin, their rifle. Well, I did that. Then it started turning into, um, Painting their, their belt line, their equipment, you know, their e-tool, their entrenchment tool or shovel, their belt, their canteens, their gas mask, canisters, and some of their boots. But I did that, so I started thinking to myself, well, I'm going to paint it all this way. Might as well make it legit, make it more realistic. I already brought some life into them, you know, because it just makes it more poppy on your board game. I was like, instead of wasting the time painting all these guys like this, I might as well just paint them realistically. Well, how the heck am I going to do that and not get nations and factions confused? Well, I just made their base, you know, their faction, so no one can't get them confused now. And it really does help because the Russian uniform and the Japanese uniform are actually the same they're so close when i first started painting them they were the same there was it was called a khaki gray i believe i painted them both but for a new player he's not going to know that he's not going to know what color scheme you painted like you're looking at these pieces obviously you're painting them you're preparing them like you know what you got new join or even a a player who knows the rules and everything, like he doesn't know what a an infantry is compared to a Panzer Grenadier or a like. Here's this a mountain uniform, mountain infantry as a militia and a normal infantry. He ain't gonna know that unless you do some distinguishing things. So these are all the same paint scheme. The scheme I'm gonna show you guys later. Now I'll see the different finishes I have. I've been experimenting. But they're not going to know that. you got to make your players love the game. You know, they don't want to get bogged down and more confusion from an already uh, en enhanced um, rules. So you always want your players to come back to you and play because the easier you make it for them, more likely they will come back. But I did paint these pieces for game playing purposes. So you can obviously start it this way. If you just truly want to just bring a little bit of life into your game board. And but still have the same playability for anybody who comes. Which is great. But I didn't waste my time. I started looking at realistic photos and specific color schemes. I, just, I enjoyed it a lot. Really good pastime. So I want 
full throttle instead of painting more historically accurate. So the first thing you're going to do is find the piece you're going to that you want to paint, and you're going to paint the axes now is out of box. Cut off their base, their feet off the base, and we're getting more basing later, but or go to the internet and find one and seventy two scale figurines or miniatures just like that. And the next tool that really freaking helps is this. I got this as a gift for Christmas last year and I didn't I saw them on YouTube and everything. I didn't need it. I had the exacto knife. It worked perfectly. I didn't want to spend the money. But this thing is a lifesaver. Well, time saver, I should say. And it also, it comes in handy when you're done painting your miniature and when you base them. We'll get into that later. Hopefully I remember. But it, it, it does come in handy. So you're going to pick out your pieces. And usually I do group 10 now. But at the beginning I was painting for Axe and 1940. I was painting 40 infantry for each nation. Italy and Anzac only painted 25. But I forgot what was going on there. So just get a group of 10 and uh, pick them out. Now don't worry about that little pin nail on the bottom right now. The first thing you got to worry about is when you prep your units after you cut them out is that see that line right there from the mold that's called a flash well, that's called flash now what you got to do is you you can ignore it don't worry about it that makes your pieces a little bit better take an exacto knife just take that blade and just scrape it you can use a sanding tool or a sanding pencil that'll help out but exacto knife it's going to do the job. The next thing you're going to do is to wash your piece. And the reason you got to wash your piece is when these um, miniatures come out of the mold, they have this thing called a mold release, and they always use it because if they don't use it. The pieces aren't going to come out. They're going to get stick to the. They're going to st stick to the mold, ruin the mold. So they put this coating on there, make this piece come out. Nice and easy. So you do need to wash it. Now, I didn't wash all my pieces. And they still turn out fine. There's a lot of guys on YouTube and on the forums who don't wash their pieces. It's a waste of time. But you might as well do it just in case. So after you wash your piece, you need to prepare your basing, which is this little pin nail. And what I got is these little nails... I don't know what they're called. I guess they're called pin nails or sewing nails. But that's what they look like. And how I stick these in their feet, I only do one at one foot. I don't do two because you got to make two holes then and be more mathematically correct. Just one will do you. You're going to heat this up under a candle, over a candle. Use a pair of pliers because it's going to get hot. Take it off and pin his foot. Now sometimes you might come off the edge. You might have the whole thing exposed. You might actually miss it. The foot, you know, the center completely and come on the side. That's okay. Just when you prime it and you paint over it, it's not going to show. Just be careful like when you do heat up these nails... A little tip is don't stare at the flame. Just get it over the edge. Hold steady and just look away. When it's going red hot, pop it off. Stick it in there because you won't be blinded from the light. Other than that, that's about it. And you might get a little chark, um, some black suit on there. Because it's done a clean burn. It's going to come right off, so don't worry about it. And you can also do this after... Because I painted a lot of pieces. I already painted. Then I pinned them. You're still fine. You might have to redo the boot just a little bit. But it's not a 
fail or anything at all. So after you pin your guy, which also, side note, is when you pin him, you paint him. Instead of laying him on the, on the uh, table, and he dries, you pick him up, and you're like, well, there's a cheat that just came off. You use that pin and put him on some poster putty, like so. He's going to stand up and dry. A little tip for you. But the next step is, I usually do this at the end. When I have all my pieces painted, I set them up in a row, in a row 10, take my roundel, whoops, and I get, I get them all lined up, ready to be uh, drilled. Before we get to that step, you gotta tell you what this is. So the black part is just an acrylic disc or a wooden disc, doesn't matter what. You're just gonna lay it on the table, or a piece of cardboard, I should say, spray paint it to the, you can spray paint them all one color, all gray, whatever you want to do. Doesn't matter. But only spray paint one side because if you do both sides, it's just wasted product. Don't worry about that. Spray paint it, let it dry, flip it. Now, the whole thing that makes this process worth it about painting the pieces and not getting confused about anything are these. Whoops. Now you can find these on Google. Just type in Axe and Allies Roundels or Im Axe and Allies Images. And you're going to have to scale it down on the computer. I always use Microsoft Paint. It always it's on your computer already. So um, take it, scale it down. You might have to do it few trial and errors and print off a whole sheet. I always do 25 per sheet or 40. Oh, here we go. As you can see. Do that. I cut in strips to make it real easy. Right now this is just an experimental one, so I cut off three. But take it. Take your hole punch. This is the one I got off Amazon. It's a half inch hole punch. And all the infantry bases in the original Axis Nihilus are half an inch. And the chips that we get from Axis Nihilus in the historical board game, that little inner circle is a half an inch. So it's a perfect fit. It's way better than cutting them out. I ain't going to cut them out. Never tried, never will. I know my place. They ain't no cutting perfect circles. What you're going to do is take your hole punch, slide it in there, look at it, get it lined up. Pop it out. I ain't going to do this one because I already got it. But once you pop it out with your roundel or your base, you got to glue this on. And I always use super glue. You can use any type. But I use Gorilla Super Glue. It's normal. When you lay it on there, the gravity kind of takes effect and spreads it out already. Or you can use the gel. I like the gel better because it's. Oh, it's just, I like it better for priming or for basing the infantry with that nail. I don't have to worry about dipping in there and it running out. I can just scoop it up because it kind of, if you do it right, you can make it stand up, make it real tall. So you're not really scraping, you're not getting paint on his other boot or anything else because it makes it a little easier. So put the glue on the base. And put your roundel on top. And that's it. Now, you have all these prep. Now, you're going to paint your piece, prime it over everything. We're getting this built real quick. You're going to have all your painted pieces here. Just take your roundels or your base, line them up with it. Eyeball that hole with a piece. It doesn't have to be exact because you only do them one. Eyeball it, measure it out if you want to be precise. And take a Dremel or a press, whatever you want. A Dremel press is way cheaper. I had that Dremel for well over decades. So I had this when I was a kid. It's actually my dad's. He got a new one, so he let me have this one. I bought the Dremel press for it. Real cheap. I know it's definitely under 100 bucks, but 
That is expensive for a little bit, but it ain't too bad. For what it is, it, it helped me out a lot. Got a little cheap block of wood there. So you can use that, drill the hole. You're gonna bring it back over here. Now when you have all your little holes made, lined out, take some glue, scoop up that glue, and stick them in there. The reason I do it this way because originally I just put super glue on the legs. I had to hold it in place. They kept falling over. So I can only do one piece at a time for five minutes, do another one. All my super glue is dried out. Wasted product, right? We don't want that. This way, scoop of the glue, drop them in there, let them sit, and go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Makes it real easy. But this method is pretty steady and secured. Like it's not gonna fall off. I done drop test from shoulder height. I even tossed up in the air. They stayed in. The only problem is, is when they're in the bin and everyone's searching for it, that's how the base falls off. But this is a pretty simple way to not make them fall off. Again, don't worry about making two holes. That's just too much. One hole is perfectly fine. But don't glue them on just yet. First, you need to prime this bad boy. Now, I recommend, if you're doing batch painting, just use an aerosol can. But for onesies and twosies, you can do some brush on primer. Then uh, let them dry, and that's, the, that's where we're gonna start the painting process. But other than that, that's it for the prep work. And a little tip, to show you guys the uh, next step to start getting ready. Obviously, you need some paint brushes. Go to Walmart, some Hobby Lobby. Just buy the tiny ones, cheap ones. Go need a little cup of water. And the best thing to have is a wet palette. Now, you don't have to buy one of these. You can make one of yourself. Now, that paint on the top, kind of nasty looking. It's still wet. All I got to do is take my brush, swirl it around, and it's going to be the color that I originally put on there. It might be more diluted from the water being soaking up into it, but it's going to keep your paint dry. You can have this thing open for hours, and it's not going to dry. Originally, I just used cardboard. Took it straight from the pot for the uh, paint bottles, and it dried out after about... 10 15 minutes of work, so I did little dabs here and there. This made life 10 times easier. Now you can make your own, you don't have to go buy a fancy one, but they're only 10 or 15 dollars. They come with the the sponge, and they come with paper too. But that paper is worthless, don't worry about that. But I'll tell you this on how to make your own real quick. So, to make your own, you just take a little tub of that you already have, probably in the kitchen. Take some paper towels, fold them up or cut them up, you know, a few layers. Put them in the bin, take some water, soak it all up, pour out the excess and take some parchment paper. That's what I'm going to use here because the other paper is worthless. That comes with the wet palette. Take some parchment paper, lay it across the top. It might roll on you, just, you know, take a credit card, pour some water on top of the parchment paper. And that's how you have a wet palette. Now make sure you have the, the top for it. We all know about the containers. You gotta search for two hours for the top for a perfect match. But other than that, that's how you make your own wet palette. And I definitely recommend it. Start off with that. And if you like it, go to Amazon or eBay and buy an official one if you want to. But that's about it for the uh, prep work. Uh, hopefully you guys... Get all these things ready for it, and uh, it makes your life 10 times easier. Because when you start painting like this, you will go insane, I feel like. I am, but I do enjoy it a lot. But I got nothing for you guys. That's about it, so see you next time.